Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. We're going to be looking in this lesson at criteria for chemical equilibrium. We have now started discussing reactions. And so for a reaction, in general, I can say that because I have a mixture, if I add up over all components, the number of moles of each component times the partial molar Gibbs energy for each component, that will give me the Gibbs energy for the mixture. Now, of course, I can also, if I have reactions that are going to happen, I can also say that N sub I is the initial number of moles plus the stoichiometric co coefficient for that species times the extent of reaction times partial molar Gibbs energy. Now, if we're looking at equilibrium, we have made the assumption that temperature and pressure are constant. So we're going to say that we're at equilibrium. Therefore, T and P are constant. I could work with it varying and then rederive yet again that they have to be constant, but it will clean up our math if I just do it this way. And so if I'm considering G as a function of temperature, pressure, and extent of reaction, which will get me composition for all of my species, then what I end up with is that I'm going to have the DG with respect to whatever um, I end up with this as my expression, and I know that at equilibrium this will be zero. And I'm specifying constant temperature and pressure, so those two terms will be zero. So therefore, I just end up with the fact that I'm going to require dg dx, extent of reaction, at constant temperature and pressure to be zero. So we've said that G is this expression here, and we now are saying that dG dx at constant temperature and pressure is zero. So what is dG dx? Well, I have an expression for G that involves x. So I can take this using rules for differentiation. So based on the product rule, I end up with this expression shown here. And I can simplify this somewhat by replacing this first group here with an n sub i. and just this. What is this expression here? Well, I have my Gibbs-Duhem equation. The Gibbs-Duhem equation is going to tell me that if I fix temperature and pressure, then the sum of n sub i dg i dx, or d whatever, is identically equal to zero. So therefore, I end up that my criterion says that the partial molar Gibbs energy times stoichiometric coefficients added up for all components must equal zero. This is what becomes our equilibrium criterion for a single reaction. Now, if I have multiple reactions, 
it's not too much of a stretch to see or you can derive that I end up simply needing to add these up for each and every reaction. And if I have multiple phases, it's only a little bit harder to show that I also have that for every possible phase combination for all my components, I'll have a similar expression. So what this means is that every reaction has to be in equilibrium in every phase, okay? So this is going to be our driving expression for our equilibrium. This is the equilibrium criterion. Thank you very much for your attention. We're going to be continuing to look at chemical reactions and equilibrium by looking at Gibbs phase rule in our next lesson.